Okay, so welcome back to Tiffo TV and thank you for joining the Average Golfer. I am at the Tigers Target Board. Now then, very briefly for those of you who don't know, the Tigers Target Board is all about setting a target for your handicap for 2018. So what you want to achieve. So people, golfers, supporters of this channel have been given their name, their current handicap and their target handicap for 2018. And then as the months have progressed, inform me of the changes, hopefully positive ones that have been made. And that's the ones that we highlight on the board in white. I will go through those changes at the end of this video. So plenty of shout outs to be given. But in the first instance, what I want to discuss is how you've made those handicap reductions, what you feel, and I'm looking for a general sense of opinion in the comments boxes below here. It's a real good topic for debate in my opinion. How have you achieved those reductions? How have you done it? It isn't happening for me, but judging by the board, there's plenty of people who are playing some good golf, who are achieving their goals and are moving in the right direction. So one by one, I want to go through a checklist of what the potential is or the potential reasons are in how you've achieved that reduction. I'm going to start off with the number one thought process. Okay, so the obvious one, and it seems to be that, and my mind, surely this has got to be the logic. This is how you've achieved your reductions. It's all about practice, surely. Maybe. Anyway. Then I get to thinking, okay, so you practice. What do you practice exactly and how do you practice? So is it driver? Is it irons? Is it your short game? Has it been your putting? Which of those specific areas are you focusing on your potential weakness and concentrating all your focus and on your attention in practicing those areas? Makes sense, would you do that? The thing I've sometimes found is that the minute I identify a weakness, so for example, my chipping wasn't too good six months ago, I would have identified that as being a problem in my game. Spent plenty of time practicing on my short game. And I have to say, I think it did get better. The problem with that is, I started to neglect other parts of the game that were my strengths, and they start to become weaker. So as amateur golfers, and most of us with limited time to dedicate to golf practice, you've then got to sort of make sure that your efforts are spread across those sort of four areas, I would think, or do you? Like I said, I don't know. How has it worked for you? How have you achieved and how do you practice? And then that is the next point that I want to make. How do you practice? Is it a case of most of us will practice on the driving range. As you know, I test golf clubs on a rather frequent basis and on a, every Monday morning, I hit um, quite a few golf balls in the practice range at four golf. The thing I will say to that is that my ball striking, I would say has improved. But taking your game from the range then onto the golf course is a whole different thing. So sometimes for me, practicing in a golf range in order to improve my golfing ability to reduce my handicap is not always necessarily gonna happen. It's not a given because it's a controlled environment. And the minute you move onto that golf course, obviously it's a different environment. There's things like trees and bunkers and water and all other things that come into the equation that you don't face on the driving range. So again, for me, is practicing on the golf course, on the driving range rather, the ultimately is it going to lead to improvement and reduction in handicap. Let's have a look at the next thing that I want to consider. Okay, so we decided that uh, yes, you need to practice your golf swing and your golf te swing technique, but ultimately you need to be told where you're going wrong and that leads from instruction, golf lessons from a PGA qualified um, golf coach. Now then, again, would we put this, would we rank this very highly in the ability to reduce your handicap and become a better player, a better golfer, you're going to need assistance and you're going to need advice and you're going to need help and you're going to need coaching. Because for me, Playing for as long as I have done, my swing has relatively stayed the same, some minor tweaks, but I think that with the swing that I have currently, 
Am I going to be really any better in terms of my handicap than I am currently? I think probably not. I think there's going to be limitations with the swing that I've got and the way that I play the game there's going to be limitations unless I'm prepared to go and do the hard yards, get with a golf coach for him to identify the issues that I've got, whether that be from putter to short game into irons into driver and put the hours in and spend time with a golf coach with golf lessons and put the hours and hours of changing those swing uh, issues that I would certainly have which will ultimately lead to me potentially being a better golfer and I say potentially because this is the question that I'm asking and then reducing my handicap would golf lessons be the key I don't know how high is it on the agenda in terms of why you think you may be able to achieve a handicap reduction anyway next up Time for a shiny new set of bats. Everybody knows when it's not going right, then it's definitely the problem of the golf clubs that we've got in our hands. The irons aren't right. There's something shiny and better that's gonna just be a game changer. New driver, promises to be longer, straighter, find more fairways. So a few couple of bad rounds, it's not going well, the handicap's not reducing, what do we do? We go and buy a new driver and we think problems will be solved. Now then, I'm claiming that the G400 Max is a game changer for me in some of the videos that I've done because it's the best driver I've ever bought. And I think it is, for me. I'm finding more fairways with it. Am I reducing my handicap because of it? No, I'm not. So there are, it's definitely, this again is something that there are no quick fixes. But how many of you have been out there and bought a new club, whether it be from a wedge, set of irons, putter, driver how many of you would attribute your handicap changes your improvements in your game down to a change in golf clubs in some new kit interesting one plenty of us do it plenty of us change the kit but how many of you can honestly say that buying this new piece of equipment has ultimately led to you becoming a better player and a reduction in your golf handicap I'm dying to know the answer to this one. Anyway, next on the agenda. Yeah, is it just a case of playing more golf? And when I say playing more golf, I mean playing real golf. So like I said, not in the driving range, not on a practice putting green, not on a practice chipping area. Is it about getting out there on the golf course in a real environment and just playing more golf? Getting out there in a competitive environment. And again, i just thrown that one in there, a competitive environment. Do we necessarily improve by going round, as I do a lot on the videos, for example, play a lot of golf on my Jack Jones, and no pressure. I'm not against anybody. My three hole challenges that I play, for example, are often up against the course, so I'm not competing in any way. So have you got to put yourself into an environment where there's a little bit of pressure, where you're competing, and where, like I said, you're on the course, you're in a real environment, so the situations that you're thrown out are not artificial in terms of the, the mats that you hit off in uh, and around a driving range. Is that ultimately what leads to playing better and reducing your handicap? I don't know. That's another big one for me. Have you got to be out there on the golf course? Is the driving range a false environment? And then, finally, there's one more other thing that I want to consider as being a potential issue as to why you do or you don't reduce your handicap. Yeah, it's the mental approach to the game. Um, again, it's a bit like what I've just said about taking your game from the driving range and onto the golf course. Whole different environment, whole different ball game. Playing on your own playing in a four ball, playing on a Friday afternoon for a fiver with your mates as opposed to playing with a, um, on a Saturday morning in a medal competition off the white tees. Different situations altogether. And ultimately, they all lead to different mental approaches required, I would think. And again, is the whole mental approach and the strength of character, the strength of mind, the, is that a key element 
So again, ultimately playing golf and reducing your handicap. Is that something that you have to, has your mind as well got to be focused? Has it got to be goal driven? And when I say goal driven in this case, my goal being to be a lower handicap golfer, a better golfer, but ultimately that means I'll be a lower handicap. So my mentality, my whole drive, my whole um, reasoning and logic when I get out there and get the sticks out is the ultimate goal of my mental approach key and important to making sure that I get out there, achieve the very best I can and ultimately reduce my handicap. So there you have it, you have all the reasoning in which I can think we could possibly make a reduction in our handicap and if I've missed anything, I've probably missed something out no doubt, there could be some logic and something in particular that's helped you make a reduction in your handicap then please stick it in the comments box below. But the real thing I want, the real feedback I want is for as many of you to get involved and tell me in the comments box below of all the things that I've mentioned, what has ever helped you achieve you make you play better golf and achieve a better handicap what in those things because it's great for me i thought about doing this video a few days back and i just i'm dying to know the general sense of opinion as to what has helped you or what we think helps us be better players and be lower handicap golfers anyway that's that video done what i'm going to do now is i'm going to and there'll be a pan across this whole tagger's wall I've added a lot of people over these last few months and I've probably missed a few people out. There is a lot of white on that board which indicate, like I said, the positive handicap changes. So well done to everybody who has achieved those, uh, the, those moves so far and long may it continue. Plenty of white, we just want to see white all over that board which means everybody's playing good golf and they're all doing very, very well indeed. So it'll pan out on the finish. Keep an eye out for your name. If you're not included, all you need to do on this particular video is put your name, your current handicap, your target handicap, and I will stick it on the Taggers target board. So for now, that's me done. Thank you for watching. Hope you get involved in this one. Hit the like button, subscribe if you don't already, and uh, I will see you very, very soon.